In 1910, Herbert Asquith called a snap election in response to the House of Lords' rejection of the People's Budget, put forward by Chancellor of the Exchequer, David Lloyd George. Seeking a new mandate, his Liberal Party lost its parliamentary majority and now relied on the support of 40 Labour MPs to govern. The WSPU, which had campaigned against the Liberals in 40 constituencies, claimed credit for unseating 18 Liberal MPs. In its weakened state, the government conceded to Labour MP Henry Brailsford's proposal to establish a cross-parliamentary conciliation committee to draft a private members bill to extend the parliamentary franchise to women occupiers. The committee's draft bill planned to enfranchise one million married women based on them meeting a property qualification. Whilst the proposals were far removed from what many suffragists desired, it was hoped that its moderate terms would attract sufficient parliamentary support to become law. Over the course of two days in July 1910, the bill was debated in the House of Commons. The bill was carried by 109 votes and sent to be reviewed by a parliamentary committee. However, Asquith refused to give the bill the necessary parliamentary time. The closing remarks of his speech in July show how he used suffragette militancy to justify his decision. The cause which cannot win its way to public acceptance by persuasion, argument, organisation and by the peaceful methods of agitation is a cause which has pronounced upon itself its own sentence of death. Parliament was dissolved in November for another general election. Upon hearing this news and that the bill would not be given more time, Emmeline Pankhurst led 300 members of the WSPU to Westminster in protest. Their progress was halted by the police and a six-hour struggle ensued. In total, 119 arrests were made. The suffragettes complained about the physical and indecent abuse they had received, complains that the authorities refused to investigate. Black Friday, as the event was later called, was a public relations disaster for the government. Several newspapers took the side of the suffragettes and printed photos that depicted the brutality of the police response to unarmed female protesters. However, whilst Black Friday galvanised public support for the suffrage campaign, the mood in Parliament was less sympathetic. MPs became increasingly reluctant to be seen to be giving way to suffragette militancy. Four days later, Asquith promised that if returned to power, the Liberals would introduce a franchise bill that would allow amendment to include votes for women. The WSPU interpreted this as a further stalling tactic and marched on Downing Street. Asquith was accosted and his car windows broken. 159 were arrested, followed by a further 47 over the next few days. In May 1911, a second conciliation bill for women's suffrage, still a private members bill, was debated in Parliament. It secured a majority of 167 in favour. Asquith promised to give the bill a week of parliamentary time. However, in November, he announced that the bill would be dropped in favour of the government's own male suffrage bill. He added that suffragists would be able to add an amendment to this bill to allow some women to vote. The WSPU declared that war would be renewed on the government if it didn't drop its bill and introduce one that explicitly included women. The government's proposed manhood suffrage bill came to nothing. In February 1912, a further bill was introduced. It was given its second reading on the 28th of March and, unlike the previous two bills, was narrowly defeated by 14 votes.